Hello everyone, welcome back to UKSG Green 2024. This event we are raising money for Crisis, and you can donate with the links below the stream. We would also like to shout out ESA and BSG for their continued support. And now it's time for Vicetra, Running, Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines, Any Percent, Nosferatu, which is the prettiest of vampires. Good Agreed. luck and take it away. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Woo. Hey, let's do this. Okay. So, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I'll make it short and sweet with the intro. Playing on patch version 1.1, um, which means when we go to create our character, we can also spend the points, right? Reselect the clan. We get our points back. And to save is the process of filling out the character sheet like that. I've got a save, so we will load the game. We've got to skip the cutscene, otherwise it's going to cause crashes at various points throughout the run. And, uh, right, not so to any percent. So if I count us down, we hit, hit the button, so on go. I'll do. Three, two, one, go. Right. So, VTMB, any percent Nosferatu. Uh, it's a Source Engine game. In fact, there's a. It was released, I think, just the day before Half-Life 2 was supposed to release, and there was a whole controversy around it, at least, you know, with the devs anyway. Uh, so it is using Source Engine, so our primary form of movement is going to be bunny hopping and air strafing. Um, so we're going to be doing a whole lot of that. There's a few sequence breaks in this run. Um, two of them are very major. Like, f the first one we're going to run into will be in... Actually, no, that, I was about to contradict myself. There's actually quite a lot of sequence breaks. I was about to say, like, you say, no, there's like a few sequence breaks here. No, this whole beginning section is known as, like, Reset City, because you miss up one glitch here at any point. It's just, up, oh, Rod's dead. Yeah, there's a whole sequence of, <laughs> a whole sequence of sequence breaks with, um, You could Santa say there's Monica. a bunch of sequences. A sequence of sequences. So, we're going to jump on Jeanette here. What this is going to do is push her into, towards the uh, elevator, which we're going to need to come back to. If she's cooperating. I have faith. I'm not so sure the game will though. Uh, so, because we've already maxed out our character sheet via the uh, the exploit, however you want to to look at it, we're gonna head straight towards the. Is it the Lakeside Hotel or Ocean House? Uh, Ocean House. Ocean House. That's it. I keep mistaking Silent Hill 2, and <laughs> this for some reason. They're two different games. That are like, look, Silent Hill 2 is not made with duct tape, gummy bears, and maple syrup. Disagree. <laughs> Sorry, this game is made with, like, I don't know, what? Hopes and a, dreams? Hopes and dreams and a fish. It's about as good as it's going to get her. Uh, there is a whole sequence where uh, if you fall, well, you should ordinarily fall through those stairs, right? And you get, like, a whole horror sequence. Um, this whole section is, it, you know, it's quite spooky. The first playthrough of it, it's, it's a very much a massive tone shift. Um, you start out as this uh, fledgling kindred. Um, new to the life of what is essentially the undead and uh you get to meet all these cast of characters and you know you get acquainted with people some friendly some generally amicable and then you come to this area it's a total tone shift in the sense that oh by the way this place is uh is haunted you're very likely gonna die it's very it's very very spooky there's a, like a whole coming there's someone's coming it's gordon yeah he's just mad he you know lost the lamb sauce what is he cooking Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that's all. it's on fire. It's worth mentioning, actually, whenever I interact with um, terrain, like doors and stuff like that, I'm going to be dropping the frames to 60 FPS by a mouse toggle. The reason for that is because... <laughs> in fact, when I get to a door, which is coming up, not this one that I'm about to open, this one's actually a bit of a, a time save. So, you can open that door. You shouldn't be able to uh, from that side. But... Going back to the topic of frame limiting, this is if the speed of door opens if you have unlocked frames, right? Very slow. Not great. But if you drop it to 60, perfect. It just opens much more fluidly. It is actually faster. And, you know, if you happen to get stuck between the door and, like, a wall with uncapped frames, you can get stuck in the wall and it can literally, it will genuinely kill you if you're unlucky, which is a very silly. stuck. Yeah, like, the what there used to be attack in um, later in the run, where you would actually 
not so much weaponize it, but you would use that as an exploit to clip through uh, one of the environments to sequence break, which is quite... I'm grateful we don't have to do that anymore, but it's been replaced by um, what is now the Romero tech, or Hollywood skip, which I'll get to explaining in a bit, um, which is objectively <laughs> more of a headache, if you ask me. Uh, Romero's a chill guy. I don't understand why you dislike him. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I won't have any valid reason to hate on Romero when it comes to it in this run, right? Right, so Jeanette should now be by the elevator, and she is. Oh, perfect. Right. I'm playing a little safer, in, and by that I mean I'm making quick saves. Like, in my actual, uh, like, try hard attempts, I, I make no quick saves, I just YOLO it. That's what you got to do, but. Um, we bring up the inventory to um, regain character control. You should be able to move during that cutscene, right? We're going to proc the elevator, run back outside, re enter Asylum, which is the uh, nightclub we're in. Isolated in the chat. We should see some uh, subtitles appear in the top left, indicating that the uh, next part of the sequence is happening. We're going to groove a little bit. Ooh, is this I... not the most handsome man you've ever seen in your entire life? He is very handsome. Look Bro that, is look dripping. Look at that forehead. Sure. <laughs> it's magnificent. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see him there. Oh, he's running away. Me and Alu uh, refer to him as Nigel. Alu's uh, another runner. Obviously, you know Alu because he's also Ran Dead Rising. Yeah. <laughs> Ran Dead uh, Rising, he's a uh, mini golf uh, connoisseur. And we just jump through the ceiling because uh, this is uh, Therese. She's another character, obviously. Uh, but she's got like a, a range where she can like interact with you. If you jump and crouch, it extends your hitbox. Um, and it, it, for just some drag, reason. It just sucks you up through the ceiling. And you, you stand on the bottle, you jump and crouch, and it just gets pulled straight through the ceiling. So, no matter where you are, there you get pulled through. Also, if Vi shuts this door too quickly, the elevator will just open, close, and then you have to wait a bit longer. I yeah. Kind of the hard way. <laughs> yeah. See, I've been quite fortunate in that. A lot of... Oh, no. Oh, no. This is so Jova. No, you're fine. I don't think you're so. You're fine. That's right. We've got safety saves just in case, but I yep. think because that guy blocked us on our way out. Yep. Um, we want to try and leave that area very quickly because... Uh, We've dropped that lockpick between the grates on the elevator, right? What that in we intend to do is block those doors uh, so we can come back and, you know, go through it. Because we've done so much sequence breaking... Uh, the game is currently bugged. Yeah, there's a bunch of flags that aren't set within the game's logic. Um, okay, we were actually quite lucky there. Told you, you're fine. So we pick up the lockpick, we stand between these gates, and then we just... W and S, and that's going to open these doors because the game watch gets very confused, which is uh, relatable. The thing is, though, as well, if you go too far backwards, the door just shuts on you. And you yep. Know, you lost it. Yep. And that's uh, another way the run can die. The oh, this can, can softlock. Yep. <laughs> for some reason, she will not turn around and uh, it'll softlock for whatever reason. So, Vi's going to try and do a specific bit of dialogue here to keep both of the uh, characters. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But. It's a set through dialogue. If you mess one dialogue option wrong here, um, up to the first, I believe it's the seven dialogue options. Yeah. Uh, you end up picking one side or the other, and ideally you want both of them. Yes, it's faster to um, save both the twins because um, it teleports you outside of the asylum and sends you next, uh, sends you faster on the, the main quest um, to where you need to be going. But if you save just the one of them, you've got to do the walk of shame, as it were, and actually walk out of the asylum. Which is, uh, Imagine not teleporting out, goddamn. I know, couldn't be me. How cringe. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are now greeted with what the Malkavians call ugly dude. Um, what do you mean? He's beautiful. Yeah, I see. I'm all for it. He's an Osferatu. I'm he, kindred spirit. Um, yeah. His name is Bertram. I won't get too much into the story because I'm going to be real. I'm not going to do it justice in the time that I've got. <laughs> I tried uh, doing like a story. No, well, like a play-by-play -play sort of thing with the story uh, when I was running this at a previous marathon. Oh, I want Obfuscate here, otherwise You're bad things cool. will happen. Yep. So, one thing with Obfuscate in this game, um, because this game is incredibly well put together, the, the <laughs> FPS in this game drops dramatically. So, it makes this section kind of more sluggish, and there's a guy behind this door which uh, he wants to try and avoid. If you bump into him, you kind of get seen, and uh, that's very good. 
Yeah, so there's a, the way we came into this warehouse, there's um, a big metal gate that will drop if you aggro or become known to those two guys in the office. You can draw the attention of everyone out here, that's absolutely fine, but those two guys in the office, you, you, you absolutely have to avoid. Um, otherwise... Uh, the They'll shut the gate. And yeah. you have to go all the way around the back, all around the side, and then jump over. And that's not very good. Yeah, it's that used to be the route, though, for uh, Gangrel and Tremere, which are two different clans, mm -hmm. uh, which you can play as, which also have um, speedrun routes to them. Um, but with a bit of tinkering and testing, I did manage to find a way to solo uh, clans that don't have Obfuscate, which is the discipline or the magical ability to turn invisible, uh, can actually take that route, which is an improvement on the, like, the actual route itself, which is nice. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned is, if you're unfamiliar with the Nosferatu in uh, the World of Darkness or Vampire the Masquerade, we are <clears throat> unattractive conventionally. Um, <laughs> so we have to travel via the sewers um, as opposed to getting a taxi, which is a little strange because we appear to be getting out of a taxi here. Right, we've got about a the better part of two minutes of cutscenes, so if there is any messages, anything you'd like to read, then now is a perfect time. Alrighty, so... I would like to thank BSA and BSG for supporting this marathon. Like BSG, they hold a bi-monthly gathering in the Netherlands, and they have supported UKSG from the very beginning by spreading the word and providing us a channel to stream on and past events, among other things. So mark your calendars, because BSG 36 is on June 1st and 2nd. That is in a week, I think, from now. It will be streamed on the ESA channel, so tune in next week to get the best of the speedrunners from the Daily Luke's. Woo! Woo! Happy days. Thank you for that. Right, so. A bit of a story beat, because we've got the cutscenes, uh... Happening. Oh, the language from him. I know. It's going to get worse as well. Brace <gasps> yourself. I know. My man's... That's the... Nines Rodriguez. is definition of uh, BAMF. He, he, like, he, he's, he just plays it so cool, so chill. And he just threatens three of these at Sabat. Sabat being um, feral vampires, if you will. They don't really care for the masquerade. They're a bit more fast and loose with uh, trying to keep you know, the presence and existence of uh, vampires under wraps. These guys are a little more free with it. Um, Nines is an anarch, which is, uh, I don't even, he's just an anarchist. Let's go with that. <laughs> Badass is what we're going to go with. Anyway, this cutscene is about done, which is good. And we're going to spawn into downtown. We're going to do a bit, it is basically a fetch quest, but... Really, we're just going to set a flag for the uh, conversation with uh, LaCroix. So we're going to move over to the last round, which is the Anarch HQ, I guess you'd call it. Oh, that guy Ooh, isn't usually there. I mean, he's random, I guess. I don't know. This guy is oh, very clean. I don't usually see um, mobs get in the way, though. That's quite different to what I'm used to. Anyway. We talk to this guy, we say we're not interested in what he's selling, um, thanks for wasting my time. And now we're going to go be a bootlick for the Camarilla uh, and buddy up to uh, Prince LaCroix. The reason for this is, it's faster, and uh, it's not out of allegiance or any sort of um, personal bias. I think LaCroix is a crook. <laughs> well, what he's also doing in the uh, little sewers he enters them, he's uh, back up to the ladder and he's basically spamming his scroll wheel. So he has jump down to spacebar, but also both scroll buttons, so scroll wheel directions. So he's just spamming his scroll wheel to go through that quickly because you maintain your momentum jumping off the ladder. So yeah, that's right. That just kind of saves a bit of time in the areas where you've got to kind of crouch. Yeah, if you like walk back onto the ladders and then jump off, you gain a bunch of momentum, which is um, obviously very useful, but. On the higher frame rates, uh, you have the chance of like accidentally crashing. Well, crashing and falling into the terrain, and it like sort of gets you stuck there until you like you drop back down to 60 FPS. So, oh, for me, it always crashes. <laughs> skill issue. <laughs> I mean, the biggest skill issue is that right, you just pass us levitating. <laughs> that that's what we call a flex. Oh, so it's close. Too. Okay, so Lacroix, that dude that we were speaking with. Uh, his set was on a bit of a fetch quest. We're going to go on to the... Uh, it is the day, minute. Yes, it is the day. And uh, we're going to 
be introduced to the main story beat of this game, which is the Ankaran sarcophagus. Um, what the Ankaran sarcophagus essentially is, it's the home to a antediluvian vampire, which is like a third generation vampire, so extraordinarily powerful. And the reason why everyone's so interested in this antediluvian is because they want to, um, oh, what's the term? They want to essentially consume this super old vampire to become super, super powerful. So basically, they want to become like Super Dracula. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> is it Diablerai or Diablery? I don't know. Diablery. Let's go with that. I heard that much. <laughs> That's how okay. I pronounce it anyway. <laughs> also, it's very clean movement and oh, he's clean with it. So you can use uh, the, the Spectral Wolf. Spectral yeah, Wolf yeah. ability. Oops. Uh, I can't remember the name of it because it's my head uh, tied us to a clock in the morning. Uh, he can use that on the guards in the corner. He will then die to the wolf by the time you get thrown to it. You can get more pistol bullets, which is handy later on for the skip coming up in the next little chapter. Yeah. So I mentioned that there's a couple of sequence breaks. The, the one that's coming up is not so much a sequence break. It's, it's you know, it gets you through one of the levels a little faster. But um, it's the first. And my throat is so dry. Basically, the, the trick coming up in the next place is called Grout Skip. Grout Skip is a very interesting glitch. I'll explain it more when we get around to it, because Vi's voice is clearly dying <laughs> at the moment. So I will try my best to explain things the best I can where I can do them. So he's going back to the Croy right now. So he will then talk to him, go past the magical spiritual rat that is currently levitating in the air for whatever reason. Uh, he's because he's cool. And uh, yes, he's going to go talk to the Croy. Also, something interesting happens with uh, the characters in this little cutscene. The guy in red, keep an eye on him, because he has a very interesting thing happen to his clothing. And, hey, there he goes, backwards. <laughs> An old bug. That only happens on, like, uncapped FPS, so. I am cooking. That was clean. Yes. Right. So, I think so. Oh, well, that was the wrong dialogue prompt, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. You got this, it's fine. Okay, so Grout's Mansion. Uh, there's a frame, it's not just frame perfect either, which is the worst thing. It's a multiple sequence of frame perfect inputs where uh, you're going to be jumping off of um, the ability uh, Bloodsucker's Communion, which is no. going to spawn a bat. Also, sorry, I was going to say right now, if you're just confused what's happened. If Vi's opening the little menu there by pressing Q, he's able to skip past that cutscene and go talk to Nines and basically just skip parts of that it just saves a few seconds but it's pretty cool yeah there's only two instances in the run where that happens um the first one is when Jeanette is heading towards the elevator and the second is right there with uh nines outside okay so whilst vi's voice seems to be going i'll clean great skip now so you can kind of concentrate a bit more on it so he's going to punch this goon or guy that's in here and he's going to use Night Ravens on him by close to the bookshelf to distract him. Now he's going to use Bloodsuckers, uh, have it equipped, and he's going to jump on his head, jump on top of this bookshelf, at the same time, call in the bats, go to a particular spot, save the game, and he's going to jump off the bookshelf whilst holding left, and then spam his scroll wheel to hit a frame perfect trick six times in a row. Let's go, go one, dude! Try. That's what I'm talking about. I am. He's cooking. Ooh, I am cooking. Honestly, that trick, uh, it's very awkward because it is ran it's not random for say, it's just very finicky because you have runs where you can either get it first try round or you can get it on the 10th attempt. But either way, it's faster by doing that than it is to go through the entirety of the mansion because you have to go up some stairs, you know, go to a lever, open a door, go up some stairs, go down some stairs, go around and all the other stuff in between. Okay, so, I, I'm very satisfied with how the rest of this run goes because yeah you've got like second try dude that's great that tech is um that is genuinely a run killer for me nowadays like yep I'm also you can get stuck in those floor there yes you, well you've got to sort of go through those doors uh, mid air otherwise you do just get permanently stuck in it and you have to like I the hard way yes you did I think I actually told you <laughs> he mid told run me. it was like mid run like hey dude, by the way dude it's like oh, I'm stuck no nah, no nah, go back through the door jump through it like what do you mean jump through it oh it works. This game is abandoned wear, which is not actually a fault of the devs. It was the publishers that wouldn't let them. Uh, oh, that sucks. That's fine. Uh, the publishers wouldn't actually let them like release uh, support patches, and that's why we have uh, Wesp Five, who's done like all these community patches, and it's like, I think it's on like version eleven point four now. 
And I'm pretty sure it's higher. I'm pretty sure it's like higher now. But if you're interested in playing this game, it's still on Steam. It's still the unofficial patch. It has a bunch of cut content. It makes the game run better. It's basically like the silent patch version of this game. It's the best way to explain it. it also, by the dev was use Bloodsuckers to get more blood because he goes low on blood. He goes into a frenzy and loses a lot of time. Yeah, so Frenzy is um, a state of being with Kindred where they sort of get, um, not I, I guess, like sort of possessed, I guess. They go into like a fugue state where they are they overtaken. Hungry. Yeah, they get hungry and uh, they're overtaken by the sandwich. beast. <laughs> and um, you lose control of your character for like seven, eight seconds or so, which is obviously not ideal if you're trying to uh, yeah. go nice and fast. <gasps> He's dead. Wait, Grout's dead? He's dead? Grout's dead? Bruh. What? Well, he was into something, apparently. Man got nailed. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. Not touching that one, huh? No. Right, let's see if we can get a nice uh, grout exit. So I hook that wall and then jump because that guy has RNG of uh, lunging towards you and breaking your breaking your flow, basically. Um. Okay. Not Basically, if you get hit by any of the guys here, he loses all the momentum while bee hopping, and he's using Night Ravens just to stall them out. Also, in this section here, if he doesn't play on 60 FPS, it will hard lock the character stuck in the cutscene, so you're technically in the building and you won't jump out of it for whatever reason. It's just high FPS equals soft lock. Yep, you can end up in the origin point of the map. Oh, he, he, he gets the tunnel jump. Dude, I am cooking. Yeah. I don't mean to be like all braggadocious, but that is that is the movement is there. Well, you are the world record holder, by the way. Again, as of like, Two like, days, tw like <laughs> 24 hours ago. <laughs> it won't last though. Lissy will turbo gap me, and he'll get the first sub 20 uh, sub 27 because he is objectively a better player than me. I just grind more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. So we've gone to. They're in a museum. That's it. It's a museum. Not. I. I no matter what. What are you going to call this? Like an aquarium? I was going to call it um, a library because the past. How is. I mean, I can understand that because the most museums you do learn stuff, so it could be a library. I get the logic, it's just I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, just blame on the fact it's 2 30 in the morning. It's perfectly fine. And that you've been traveling for eight hours on trains that have been cancelled. True. Uh, shout out to uh, LNER for uh, making what should be like a five hour trip uh, an eight hour ordeal. Tony wasn't just like kind of constant DMs to me going, uh, I don't know if I'll be here or not. And I'm like, yeah, you'll be fine. It's depressing. Yeah, see, I was more concerned about like being here on time for Swede's Dead Rising run, right? Rather than like my own ones. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Also, using Blood Suck is not a guy because he gets his blood up, plus drops the key card, and he can grab it faster. Also, the range on grabbing stuff is really strange. It is, yeah. So, Source itself has a bit of, um, at least this version of the Source engine has a bit of, uh, finickiness when it comes to like object detection and range that you can interact from. Um, I've got kind of a feel for the maximum range you can uh, grab and interact with stuff on VTMB, uh, which is... Oh, I was hoping we'd get another one. Never mind. Never um, lucky. Never lucky, never punished. Right, so we've got the big, big sequence break coming up now because we are about done with downtown, so we're going to be heading to Hollywood in search of gorgeous Gary Golden, who is the Nosferatu Primogen. And uh, I'll make sure that some of the conversation with him is shown, because... Bro is fine. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you're going to see the awesome man known as uh, Romero. The oh, best no. buddy, the guy you enjoy, the guy you want to be and spend like 10 minutes with, you know? I mean, uh, yesterday, when he was playing ball, and I got like the cleanest Romero uh, tech I've had in like months. I was, he was my friend. Um, but I have a feeling he's going to be a bit of a, a nuisance now that we're in a marathon setting. That'd uh, be fine, dude. Look, I took all the bad luck anyway with uh, Dead Rising. It's fine. <laughs> right. It's okay. Not, you saw my Isabella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, maintained composure. Uh, anyway, this battle is very important. It will become useful later. Yeah, so I think instead. For the sake of like actually explaining what we're doing, I will actually just do this instead of uh, what I ordinarily do, which is leash Romero with the barrel. We're going to leash an NPC into this little room here, 
into this mausoleum. And that is going to be a barrel that we pull towards us to clip through a shortcut. And what that shortcut is going to do is effectively save, on the top end of runners, um, a 10 minutes of running through Hollywood and the Nosferatu Warrens. Um, in a casual sort of playthrough, it would save hours. So, we're going to aggro this dude. I'm going to run in here. Right, I want Night Wisp at Ravens. I also want to try close this door. This is a really bad start because I've bu um, buggered this. That's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, he's out. That's the most important part, really. So, Romero has two attack forms. He's got his knife and he's got his shotgun. When he's got his shotgun, he's not running towards you. Which is what we want him to do. So, I... Okay, swap the knife. Good man. We always want him coming towards us. And the most consistent way i found is, you know, cycling him with uh, Night Whisper Ravens. Whereas Vin, Alucard, and Swede have had great success using Obfuscate. And I have not because it's a massive, massive skill issue. So, I'll explain what the Obfuscate strat is as well, while Sly's doing his one. But the Obfuscate strat, uh, for whatever reason, Romero hates Vi every time he does this strat. So basically, all Obfuscate is, you go down the corner of the ramp there, so you get him to follow you, you go Obfuscate, and then you shoot your gun before you Obfuscate. And he'll follow you down to where you last shot, and you can go to the entrance to the, uh, like, what would you call this building, a like church? Uh, this is a mausoleum. Ah. Uh, I was going to say mausoleum, or mausoleum, it was like I can't think of the name of it. But you go in here and he'll follow you through. Um, so is it... Oh, he blocked me now. No, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, okay. Well, seeing as this is pretty decent pace actually so far. Yeah, he's actually followed you through, which is actually good. So I will take the uh, audacity and feed on him a little bit. Ordinarily I wouldn't do that, but I need his knife out so he runs in here, right? One more. Fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. I don't know if this will work. It will work. It's fine. Pull the barrel towards us. Clip. Out of bounds. Oh. That's not Unlucky. Good. Yeah. Yeah, the wolf is in the bad spot. Yeah, it's in a really bad spot. That's fine. Uh, you got back up. I do. Uh, where is that? So, this is why we've got safety saves, because things like that can happen. Uh, Romero outside clip. Which means I'm going to have to uh, feed on this guy, because this is... Uh, a hella old save. Safe to say, it's very useful for marathons. Yes, well, this is why we're doing it. Yep. But the, the reason that failed... In fact, it's probably better that you did see it fail to begin with, because you get, like, this you idea get, yeah. of um, what it should look like and what it shouldn't, so... Okay, this should work, because he's got, he's got like, a slight angle to him. So if I pull this barrel towards me now... If I pull this barrel towards me now, there we go! Clip Ooh. through! Panic in your voice, intensified. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what this is going to do is send us to the total arse end of the Warrens, where we're going to have a conversation with gorgeous Gary Golden. By the, clack. By the clack smack cracking of his thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Uh, wait through it, it will reveal himself in a second. Come on out. Look at that delicious mine. It, aren't the Nosferatu just the best looking clan out of the lot? Okay, anyway, memes aside, he's going to send us to Chinatown, which is the last section of this run. Um, we are quite reasonably ahead of estimate. Um, I'd say in about six minutes we'll be probably done with the run, providing there's no uh, Don't say that. major issues. But why do you say? Why do you say that? I said it because... Uh, I'm clawing back schedule time. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you can't really call back 20 minutes of a fire. <laughs> what do you mean? This run is fire. I thought it was fire as uh, San Andreas run, clearly. True. I can only aspire to such heights. Um, anyway, we've got, I'd say, about like 40 seconds of free time because it's just me moving through the sewers. So if there's anything that you'd like to read out, now is a perfect time. 40 seconds. Okay, got it. <laughs> 39, 38. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> So, Crisis... 34. What? <laughs> so, would you like to know more about Crisis? I actually would, yes, please. What is Crisis about? So, Crisis has a main aim to relieve the huge pressure of homelessness. So okay. Makes sense, right? They do that through nine skylights. They have one in Birmingham, Brandt, Croydon, Edinburgh, London, Air, Merseyside? Newcastle, Oxford, and South Wales. So there they provide practical one-on-one -on -one support to prevent and end homelessness by helping people find safe and affordable homes as quickly as possible. 
still have left. Is that it? You've got four seconds. I got four seconds. So please donate, everyone. It's for a good cause. Perfect timing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so a quick explanation. We um, there's you should be able to jump inside that tree. That you'd you'd never think. Oh, the tree, jump into it and then jump off it. Um, you can jump over this hut, which takes you into the end game area. Ming Zhao is in that hut, but we can't do anything. We can't actually use any uh, weapons or disciplines, so we're gonna just hop over that man's jump the fence, and now we are into the end game area of Chinatown, which is great. So we've got this, like the barracks here. Oh, that's bad. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Okay, the other way. Uh, and then we've got like the inner sanctum, and then we've got the actual encounter with Ming Zhao. This door ahead, you shouldn't be able to open, but like the uh, one in um, the Ocean House Hotel, you look at it from an angle, you can open it, which is great. So that's really helpful. Saves you running all the way around. Uh, ah, and there's another quirk with this area as well. Oh my days. Dude, just... Okay, there we go. <laughs> just push. Thing blocking the door. You have to um, quick save and quick load here. Specifically in this map, because if you don't, this becomes uninteractable terrain and it you have it forces you to run all the way around. So, okay, a little scuffed, but it's okay. No, that was clean. We say goodbye to our lockpick, which has joined us throughout our entire journey, our whole thirty minutes of it. <laughs> um, I mean, it was a good few minutes, yeah. And now we're into the inner sanctum, as I call it. I don't know if it's actually referred to that. It's just called uh, Temple Three Dot BSP. Uh, we're going to kill this dude. We're going to take his katana. Now we've got to collect four jade statues, which uh, correspond to a puzzle in the center of the map. So we've got the jade cat. Ooh, clean. You're giving me anxiety every time you jump over those because I've they enough mind going, you're probably going to hit that. You're going to cause a trap. You're going to get hit by that. You're going to die. No, not good. No, nope, I'm a professional, mate. Trust me. I'm dying? <laughs> we, won't, not you. we won't talk about um, how close I came to losing that world record last night uh, by I mean, landing on one of those pressure plates. I don't know, so I didn't watch the end part of it. I watched the beginning. <laughs> yeah, you disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Very inconspicuously. <laughs> Listen, man. Man's got to do what man's got to do. Exactly. When the toilet calls, the toilet to calls. <laughs> right, so. Time will be in about... 80 seconds, but I'll hopefully do a countdown for it as well. We've got this encounter with Ming Zhao. Uh, time will be once we've uh, traveled back to downtown and gone through the elevator. So, potence. Hope not to frenzy. I think I did forget to use uh, pa uh, pestilence there, but all we're going to do is spam Burrowing Beetle and uh, hit her with uh, our katana with potence. Cycle through the uh, animalism discipline to nuke. A health bar, and this sponge is nearly done for. Anyone that's played this casually will know how much of a. I think I can get away with one. How much of a ball ache that fight is, so. Um, it's quite awkward. Especially if you don't actually spec uh, combat stats, but anyway. Do you, do you want to press the button or. Oh, I got it, dude. Okay. Right. So I'll s stand in the elevator, count down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. Uh, Right, three, two, one, time. Woo! Oh. An actually decent run at a marathon. I'm happy with that. And it took you four tries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it only took me like near enough an entire handful to get one. <laughs> no, I'm glad to um, actually demonstrate BTMB here, here at UKSG because... It's a fantastic game. It's a better casual game, and uh, like it's a brilliant experience to go through. It's one of the best RPGs ever made. It's um, a fantastic speed game if you can get over the hurdles and the quirks of it. Um, it can be a bit frustrating at times getting past that learning curve, but um, if you are interested in learning VTMB, uh, all the resources are available both on the speedrun.com page and on YouTube because of a collective effort between me, Lurk, and other people in the community. So it's been good. Um, if you're interested, Definitely hop in. I'm more than happy to help and answer questions. Sweet okay. also picked up uh, VTMB and he's uh, done well for himself already. I know that Alu is uh, sweating <laughs> that you're only like 10 <laughs> seconds behind his time. But um, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, uh, thank you to the people that uh, obviously watch me stream and uh, tag along to support me.
Thank you, Swede, for joining me on comms and uh, covering for me whilst I recovered from an extraordinarily dry throat. Um, You're welcome. I'm good to go. Thank you very much for your time.